J-E-S-S-I-C-A, last name J-O-N-E-S. Right, and what, what would be a title we could give you? Whatever Katina says. <laughs> infectious disease specialist work? Mm hmm Doctor of infectious diseases. Okay. That works for me. Well, so now I'm sitting on it. <laughs> um, you really don't want that phone to work. <laughs> uh, it gets beat up a little bit. I bet. So, uh, so Kelly set this up. So he gave me a couple questions to okay. start off asking you. Um, and then I read kind of through your the blogs too, okay. that you and the other doctors in the office had written, and uh, he said that that um, um, he had talked with um, them with one of you about specific worries as to uh, where women can travel, um, places where it, it exists, and if you're pregnant or considering getting pregnant, you know. Things to look out Things for. Things to look out for, 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 for travel purposes. Okay. Yeah, first of all. So in terms of the first question as to where is it safe to travel, of course with the summer season coming, come, along come mosquitoes. Thankfully the mosquito that carries the Zika virus, we really haven't seen that much in the United States, and if so, it's in the southern United States. So of course then northern United States, Canada is safe. Uh, Western Europe, probably Eastern Europe is also safe. Really we're thinking about Caribbean, Central America, Northern South America. Those are the countries that we're really specifically looking at at this time. Is it going to change? Definitely. As the mosquito you know, starts to move and travel and the weather gets warmer, it's probably you know, going to come up more on our radar in more countries. So those would be the places to consider avoiding um, at this point. In terms of you know, what a pregnant person can do if they have to or want to travel to those locations, you know, my first recommendation is if the travel can be postponed, postpone your travel if you're pregnant. Uh, or if you're thinking of becoming pregnant as a woman, you should consider either, again, postponing that trip or if you go to a Zika virus infected area when you come back and are thinking of becoming pregnant, wait a few weeks. Uh, it gets a little bit more complicated for the gentlemen who will be participating in the pregnancy um, because they can actually um, hold on to the Zika virus for several months. And so the recommendation is if a gentleman goes to travel and then comes back, they should actually uh, wait um, about six months before trying to uh, conceive if he had concerns about being infected. Um, but if they do travel um, and you're just worried about Zika in general, um, or if you're going to go visit some family in Florida where it might be down there, of course the things to do are uh, during times of the day where there is the virus, which is usually midday to dusk in the evening time, uh, you can either try to avoid those times of day going outside. Um, of course, when you are at home, um, closing the windows and doors, turning on your air conditioning. And then of course your clothing choices, you know, wear longer pants, longer shirts, um, stuff that's a little bit looser fitting. Um, spandex, sorry, the mosquitoes can bite right through that, so we don't want them to wear that. Also, the mosquitoes that carry Zika, they love feet and ankles. So you might want to consider, even though it's you know, sandal season and we're all you know, getting our toes done, it might not be the best time to do that if you're in an area that might have those mos mosquitoes. So shoes, socks, um, people can even um, use insect repellent and spray them on their lower pant leg and socks and shoes as well as another added level of protection. Um, and in terms of insect repellent, you know, there's only really a few things out there that have really been shown to be tried and true for preventing uh, insect repellent, uh, sorry, insect bites. Uh, the first is DEET. We've all heard of that. Uh, and there's different kinds of DEET, uh, different percentages of DEET. Uh, all of them are good. They're all equally good at preventing the mosquito bites. The difference in percentage is really how long it lasts. So the higher the percentage, the longer it lasts, so you don't have to reapply it as often. Uh, a second uh, chemical containing um, insect repellent is a chemical called picaridin. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's another one. Uh, and it's been shown to be just as good as DEET as well. Some people, especially in pregnancy, we get worried about the different chemicals and exposures that we have. So really the only natural insect repellent that's been shown to be uh, efficacious is lemon eucalyptus. That's really the only one. And again, it's, it will prevent the mosquito from trying, it, it doesn't like the odor, but also then it prevents the bite. So lemon eucalyptus is the only really natural repellent. 
Do you mean like a, like an oil? It is, yeah. So you is can it from like a specific lemon eucalyptus plant, or is it lemon? And no. oil and eucalyptus oil combined. I'm not sure, oh, okay. but it, it's it's a you know it'll be in kind of the essential oil family. But there are actual um, insect repellent manufacturers that produce lemon eucalyptus insect repellent. Um, when I looked, because um, you know when I was pregnant and interested, the only brand I found was Cutter. Um, but I'm sure you could Google it and try to find where you could get kind of a, a nice kind of bulk thing because you don't want to just get a little vial for the for your whole body, but. Um, the only natural one is lemon eucalyptus, but it is safe for pregnant women to use DEET and Picardin containing products. So any of them are fine. It's really just more of a preference issue, how often you want to reapply issue. And that's the thing if, um, you know, the question is how often do I need to re reapply? It's just based upon the manufacturer recommendation, read the bottle, because again, it can vary between the products that a person uses. Um, the other little caveat is summertime, we're going to be using sunscreen. So what do I put on first, the sunscreen or the insect repellent? So we recommend putting on the sunscreen first and then the insect repellent after that. Some products contain both sunscreen and insect repellent. We do not recommend those because you have to reapply frequently. And sometimes you're reapplying for the sunscreen, which then can lead to too high of levels of the insect repellent, which can be harmful. Um, is there a difference between like a, like a lotion-y type repellent or a spray-on? Both are fine. Doesn't matter. Most of the, as long as you use it, we're happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of answers the next question about, you know, what can you do to safeguard yourself? Um, if you're just living here in Nebraska and mm -hmm. not planning to travel, um, and, but you, you are thinking of getting pregnant. Is there anything to worry about here? Here, thankfully, no. Again, the mosquito that carries the Zika virus has not traveled this far north. We've never had it before. Again, with weather changes and, and rain, we'll just have to kind of monitor for that. But so far, we haven't seen it here. So for a person living in Nebraska, not planning on traveling, there's no concern for acquiring the Zika virus here. Um, just annoying mosquito bites. Um, and, you know, the mosquito carrying Zika, it's not here in Nebraska Correct. yet. Is there any possibility it could show up? There's always a potential for, you know, depending upon climate, weather, temperature, you know, that can always change with time. And that's what we saw with other diseases as well. You know, um, West Nile virus, we, we didn't see it for very often here in Nebraska. Now it is a part of, part of our um, just regular summertime season that we have to think about. But it's always